It's been an amazing 72 hours, and it's mainly because of this man and Leslie Kane. The debrief had put out an article on Monday morning saying that uh, a former U.S. intelligence officer and supported by other people in the intelligence community claimed that the U.S. government not only has one, but multiple craft of non-human origin. It's an amazing story, and we have one of the authors of the story here today, Ralph Blumenthal, who for decades worked for the New York Times. His uh, reputation is beyond compare, and we're so glad to have him today. Ralph, thank you for taking time. Thank you, Jim, for having me. So, David Grush, what is his main claim? Um, well, he's a high level, it was a very high level intelligence uh, officer uh, uh, out of the Air Force. And um, he has come forward to us uh, and previously had uh, got, gone to Congress uh, and uh, the Pentagon um, with information that he was privy to as a high level intelligence agent, um, asserting that the U.S. has recovered a craft of uh, intact and partially intact uh, of non-human origin. And um, he also, he says, suffered retaliation as a result of coming forward um, un illegally, actually, because there's a whistleblower statute that protects people with information like this against retaliation. Um, and it's all on the record. I mean, we... Uh, uh, so he's an, uh, not an anonymous source. He's a known source. Uh, his comments were approved uh, at the Pentagon for release to us. Um, so we think this is quite a breakthrough. So some people might say, well, what is different in this case? A lot of people make a lot of claims, uh, and you kind of touched on some of it there. But what is the difference in this case? Well, first of all, his position. He has impeccable intelligence credentials. Uh, he worked with the uh, uh, UAP, the uh, UFO jargon task force at the Pentagon. Um, and he's doing this on the record. Uh, he claims he uh, uh, has talked to you know many people in the government. As a matter of fact, his information is so uh, confidential that uh, some of it couldn't be shared with congressional staff. Um, so this is not an unnamed source. This is a highly decorated officer, by the way, he served in Afghanistan. And we have a picture in the uh, article of him in uniform in Afghanistan, um, beyond reproach, as another officer named in the piece says of him. Um, so uh, I think the level of confirmation, uh, the on-the-record sources, and the detail of the information, I think, is what sets this case apart. Now, as I understand it, he's not actually seen any of these supposed non- human craft, but he has reports and has discussed with other members of the intelligence community who have direct contact and direct experience with these. Is that correct? That's correct. I mean, he doesn't claim to have handled any of this material himself. Um, uh, as far as we know, uh, what he told us in the unclassified, uh, you know, part of his testimony, but, um, he, he testified to Congress, uh, uh, for many hours um, and produced a transcript of hundreds of pages, which is classified. So we don't know what he told Congress, um, uh, you know, on the classified level. Uh, he never claimed to us that he handled any of these craft, uh, but um, he certainly uh, seems to be very well informed from uh, his contacts in the UAP task force and other work he did um, that suggest he knows what he's talking about. Now, many skeptics out there, I saw something, Dr. Michael Shermer, the, the skeptic, uh, the, the head skeptic many days, uh, very much these days, said something to the effect that there's no there there. That's not a direct quote, but that's the uh, that's the gist of it. That the, If you have the evidence, bring me a craft, bring me a piece of physical evidence. What would you say to people who say, well, this is just some other guy saying some other thing? Well, this uh, whole subject has been uh, surrounded with the most intense uh, classification and secrecy. There's no doubt about that. It's not so simple, uh, bring me a craft. Uh, the government has buried this information 
uh, we know this, Leslie Kane and I, from a long reporting, has buried this in uh, many super secret programs, special access programs that are uh, protected. They're stovepiped uh, in the sense that um, there's no one person in charge of all these programs. They're hidden away uh, in various nooks and crannies of the government and in private uh, contractor programs. Uh, in some cases, um, the government has uh, given this work out to uh, private uh, defense contractors so that possibly it's not uh, amenable to freedom of information requests. It's outside the government. So uh, this this uh, subject has been, uh, you know, surrounded with a, with the tightest secrecy over the years, and it's it's not surprising that people are not walking in with pieces of a craft. But um, when you have highly credible, uh, you know, witnesses uh, like David Grush coming forward on the record. Uh, testifying to Congress, and um, by the way, he's represented by a former Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, um, and other people um, like Jonathan Gray of NASIC, who we quote, and uh, um, and uh, and Carl Nell, and another uh, Army Colonel who worked on the UAP task force. So, uh, you know, everything seems to line up in his testimony. And um, I think, uh, you know, the skeptics can say anything they want. Uh, the subject is, is very difficult. But little by little, I think we're prying out the truth. Why did he decide to come forward at this great personal risk? Well, he says that it was, you know, uh, information that the American public deserved to know. He waited until he left the government on April 7th. Uh, so he was cleared. And as I said before, he did get a, a clearance to discuss these things with us. He told the government uh, office of pre-publication uh, review uh, exactly what he intended to say. And they did not object. I mean, if they had found him saying something that would be um, in violation of his security constraints, uh, classified, they would have said so. Um, but um, I, I, we take him at his word that he thought this is information that the American public deserved to know. By the way, um, you know, you're not giving away any national security secrets if you tell people that we are in possession of craft of non-human origin. That doesn't reveal any technology secrets. And by the way, you know, uh, other uh, adversarial nations, Russians and Chinese and others, uh, presumably um, are doing the same kind of research we're doing. So it's not big news to them that we are, um, you know, uh, doing research in this field. Presumably they they have uh, recovered some of the same material that we have and doing the same kind of research. So um, it, it's being kept secret not from our, from our adversaries, but from the American people and people around the world. You, all humanity deserves to know uh, this very important information. Now, some may say, well, this person's background is in intelligence. Uh, so what's to say that he's not currently involved with some kind of disinformation or psyops project, and that's what this is all about? What are your thoughts uh, to folks who say that? Well, I mean, you can come up with, you know, so many different scenarios, fanciful scenarios. Uh, after, you know, 45 years of reporting for the New York Times, uh, I can say I do not believe in conspiracy theories that everyone you talk to is part of a gigantic conspiracy. They've all agreed together to say certain things. Um, it doesn't work that way. We were not hand fed this information. We dug it out from d uh, d diligent reporting. Um, I know how the story emerged uh, through Leslie's contacts with uh, Dave Grush and others in the in the uh, intelligence field. Uh, just like we broke the big story in the New York Times in 2017 about uh, ATIP, the secret UFO, um, you know, investigative arm in the Pentagon with Lou Elizondo. We broke that story. That wasn't hand fed to us. We heard about a meeting. We followed up. We got people to talk to us again on the record. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I think you can posit any possible number of, you know, uh, conspiratorial theories, but we go with facts. And that's what we're presenting to, to readers here. Just a very factual account of a high level intelligence guy who, who said, who says some pretty uh, remarkable things. Now, in terms of the claim itself, I mean, this, this would change the whole ball game. This would change everything. If it turns out to be that legitimately the government is in possession of 
craft of non-human origin, and this goes back many, many, many decades. That means we've been lied to by many, many administrations. So the question is, where do we go from here? I mean, what I, when I saw it, first of all, I thought, this is from Leslie Kane. This is from Ralph Blumenthal. Uh, and I even posted on Twitter, I said, uh, uh, Ralph Blumenthal was with the New York Times for 45 years. Do you think he would report this if he didn't know this was buttoned down? So my question is, much like the 2017 reporting, I saw that as like an irritant, uh, like an oyster, uh, like a pearl comes out of an oyster. Do you see this story in a similar way that it might be the quote irritant to get the ball rolling? I, I hope it'll bring out forth some more information. I mean, this has been a process. You know, Leslie and I were talking about this just the other day that the first story in 2017, which was, uh, you know, again, a paradigm changes. So we've been told. Uh, reported that the you know contrary to the Pentagon's uh, statements over the years that it had dropped the UFO uh, issue in, in in 1969 with the end of Project Blue Book there was nothing to nothing to see here folks you know just walk away uh, they did continue to investigate secretly and in 2007 a um, uh, a new unit was set up by Harry Reid with 22 million dollars of secret funding to do this investigation to set up what became ATIP. It had a different name in the beginning, um, and that was a that was a, a you know a bombshell that that the government had a secret office to investigate uh, UFOs UAP. So now we're beyond that. Now we're saying, and we did write a story in the New York Times uh, suggesting that the government was in possession of of craft. It was a very carefully worded story. It was very difficult to report, but now we have. It's been a progression. We've gone beyond that. We have a very high-level intelligence guy saying on the record that uh, we we have the, these these craft, um, and now the question is to get Congress to act on it. I mean, Dave Grush said to Congress, actually, you guys have been lied to all these years. The government has withheld illegally withheld information from you that you're entitled to have. So now let's see what Congress does. Are they going to demand more information? Uh, there's still a stigma to this material, unfortunately, that the government sort of put in place with decades of, of lies and misinformation. Um, so uh, Congress has to get over the stigma. Uh, courageous, uh, you know, representatives and senators have to come forward, demand answers. And what can be shared with the American people legitimately, that is not a national security secret, should be. I've long posited over the last couple of years that there's an, and this is totally from outsider, not having any sources or anything, just looking as a news consumer, looking from the outside, it appears to me that there's an internal war in the government about UFOs and providing the public more information. I'll give you my number one example. Uh, a year or two ago, when that big UFO report came out that everybody was waiting for, it was released on the afternoon of a Friday. <laughs> now, as a longtime newsman, what do you do? Why do you release a story on Friday afternoon? <laughs> to kill it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that we, uh, uh, you're absolutely right, Jim. There is a, uh, there are differences of opinion in the government about how forthcoming um, uh, the Pentagon should be uh, on this issue. Um, there are still people in high positions who think this whole subject is demonic and uh, doesn't deserve to be uh, investigated. Uh, there's something uh, uh, evil about this subject. Other people say it's a scientific issue. We, we, we need to know for our own security and protection. I mean, you know, here are these things flying around and nobody knows where they come from. No one is saying, uh, we haven't gotten to that point where anyone is speculating on the record what you know what the purpose of these craft are why they're here who sends them are they intelligent none of those questions really are being addressed because this everyone's so focused properly so on do they really exist and now uh the pentagon uh, agrees yeah they exist um they're real so now what do we do but there are still people in 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 high you know up positions who are resisting this and the government is not speaking with one voice so uh, it's it's difficult, but I think it's up to Congress to demand answers. 
Now, I want to be very careful how I phrase this because I want to give all the respect in the world to the the debrief. I would not be doing this interview now if it wasn't for Micah Hanks over at the debrief. So uh, I give them all the kudos in the world for releasing this story and uh, subjecting their servers to overheating. (laughs) But um, some might say, why didn't we read about this in the New York Times? Why didn't we read about this in the Washington Post? You've got these great reporters with this high respectability and great credibility. Why didn't we hear about that in those places? Well, we uh, we took the story first to the New York Times, where we've taken other uh, stories. Leslie and I, we published a number of them in the New York Times, a big one in 2017. We came to them early on with the story because it was – potentially, uh, you know, quite groundbreaking and important. So we went to them as soon as we had uh, pulled together enough of it to talk about. And uh, at that point, they, they passed on it. I mean, they we, we've taken them other stories over the years, some of which they've uh, green-lighted, some of which they didn't. So it's not unusual for a, a big publication to accept some stories and others to, to pass on. Um, and we were talking to the Washington Post, uh, they were very interested in the story, and uh, uh, we events just sort of outpaced us. I mean, uh, Dave's name was Dave uh, Grush, the uh, intelligence operative who had this information. His name was leaked. Um, somehow he came under increasing pressure. He got threats. He already was complaining of retaliation. Um, we just couldn't wait. Things were happening too fast, so... The Washington Post was going through its processes. We respect that. We have a good relationship with them. Uh, but we felt we, we needed to move forward very quickly. And um, the debrief where Leslie and I had both published in the past, a highly respected website uh, with a lot of expertise in defense and intelligence matters. Um, they did a lot of fact checking uh, of our article uh, on their own. Um, it was a very... Uh, high level and respectable place to publish this piece. So that's why it ended up there. But we were, we were talking to the Washington post throughout. Uh, It just, uh, you know, events sort of caught up with us. Well, I give them all the credit in the world for getting the story out there and reacting. And I don't think that they should be um, penalized for that by any means uh, from anybody. I, I think it's great. Um, so what happens now? What are the next steps? I mean, uh, obviously you wouldn't and you shouldn't tell us uh, uh, what's coming next, but is there more coming from uh, Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal on this particular line and this particular story? Should we look for follow-ups? Well, you know, watch this space, as they say. I mean, Leslie and I have been working in, in this field for many years, um, and we continue to report when we have enough uh, that we can document on the record, we'll report it. Uh, we're certainly continuing. I think that uh, in, in this particular uh, case, um, it's up to Congress now to follow up. Um, we'll have to see how the retaliation uh, complaint by Dave Grush uh, unfolds. He's complaining of you know in, in, improper, illegal retaliation against him. That's moving forward. Um, so we'll see there's a lot of balls in the air now, but I think a lot of it is up to Congress. They have to start demanding answers and put out, um, uh, you know, some information beyond the reports that have already come out from the UAP task force, which were pretty bland and, uh, not particularly forthcoming as many commentators have suggested. Um, uh, they were pretty, uh, pretty, I don't know, uh, one-sided, simple, uh, not very sophisticated. Uh, so I think uh, Congress needs to demand more because, as Grush said, they're the ones who were lied to and who uh, who had information improperly withheld from them. And since they're the guardians of the purse, I mean, this is money that the American people are, are you know, our taxpayers are giving the government to, to do this research. Uh, people demand to know what, what's what's being done with it and what, what the government is finding out. You know, our original story in the New York Times in 2017, we put out three um, videos of encounters between Navy pilots and uh, UFOs or UAP. Um, that's just a, a, a small sample of what the government has collected with our taxpayer money. So there's a tremendous amount of information out there that the government has collected. 
um, that arguably can be shared within national security constraints with, with the American people. And other countries have this information too, by the way. America is not the only one. Uh, the, this is a global phenomenon. Uh, many, many governments have this. I think we've, we, the, Amer the American government, has been the lead in sort of tamping down uh, disclosures of this material. But um, there have been some significant disclosures by other countries, uh, European community, uh, Latin America, Asia. So uh, a lot of this has to come together. And, and uh, you know, the humanity really sh d demands an answer. The AARO came out with a statement, and here's part of it. To date, AARO has not discovered any verifiable information to substantiate claims that any programs regarding the possession or reverse engineering of extraterrestrial materials have existed in the past or exist currently. And what I would say, that sounds like it was written by a lawyer. Or, or What do you say to that statement? Maybe AI wrote that. <laughs> um, you know, these statements are very carefully worded. And when Ker Sean Kirkpatrick testified to Congress not long ago, he also said he he wasn't aware of certain things. And when uh, others testified at the, the last big congressional hearing um, in May 2022, I believe, uh, about UAP, they were very carefully worded. Um, so I think you have to take these denials uh, really uh with some skepticism because they are, uh, first of all, the government has a long history of not being straight with the American people on this issue for a lot of reasons. They didn't want to admit what they didn't know. They were afraid of panicking the population. I mean, all kinds of things. Anyway, uh, it's a matter of record that the government has not been forthcoming uh, with the American people on this issue for decades, going back to Roswell and before. So, um, I don't put a lot of faith in that statement. Uh, I, I think, as you say, it, it sounds like it was written by lawyers. Now, is it fair to say, then, that you, Ralph Blumenthal, believe that the American government is in possession of multiple craft of non-human origin? Well, that's what David Grush, uh, with, with great credentials, has told us. We reported it. Uh, you know, that's all we can do as reporters. We take information, we vet it to the best of our ability, uh, we check it out, uh, we compare it to, you know, previous information, we get other people to weigh in on the reputations of the people we talk to, and we put it out. Uh, that's all a reporter can do. I think we've been very responsible and careful. As I said, there's nothing um, people have to take on faith here. Uh, everyone is named. There's no unnamed sources. Um uh, the documentation is there. We put put in parts of David Grush's military record, uh, his performance uh, evaluations, which were all very high. Other people vouching for him who are named. Um, so, you know, beyond that, what can we do? We, we put out the information. We check it. Uh, we, we show where it came from. We put names to it and then let the American people decide and ask questions. Congress can ask questions. And I know you are a busy man and have a lot of other people to talk to, and we thank you so much for your time. The quick question, the last question is, any final thoughts on this chapter of uh, this reporting and uh, anything you'd just like folks to know? Well, you know, it's a very difficult field to report on because a lot of it is classified. Um, and the trick is to get people to trust you enough to share what they can with you without breaking any laws. No one wants to go to jail for, and we don't ask people to, you know, give us classified information. Um, but we, uh, we rely on and encourage people with uh, newsworthy information to come forward and trust us. It's not an easy process. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll continue the reporting. I, th I think it's an important issue. You know, when you think of the important questions out there, uh, this ranks right up there with, you know, what, what happens when we die? How did the you know universe begin? Um, is there a God? <laughs> uh, are we alone? Uh, these are all, you know, important philosophical questions that, uh, you know, we as a species are, are pursuing. And I'm proud to play a little part in, you know, getting out information that, that we can. Um, and I think, uh, you know, these are, elemental questions that, that deserve answers to the extent that to which they don't transgress national security. 
So um, I'm, I'm proud to, to be part of this process and we'll continue to dig, uh, Leslie and I, uh, to see where the story goes. Well, first of all, I salute you on your work, and I think it's great, and I just look forward to what's coming, and I thank you for taking some time out of your very, very busy schedule to be with us today. Jim, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you.